Are we live? Hi, Emily. Hi, Bradway. Thank you for coming to my paste paper party. <clears throat> okay, I think we're good here. If you can see my hands, then that's where we need to be. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna make some paste paper. So, this is a really pretty old um, decorative technique. It's used um, in in sheets and a lot of old books. I don't have any old books, but I have sort of a, a new book uh, here that I made that has a paste paper cover. And I'll try to hold it close to the camera so you can get an idea. You can see the sort of 3D effect that it gives, a slight 3D effect. That's, that's kind of the cool thing about, um, about paste paper. And here's another kind right here. So, so yeah, so this is, um, this is what we're going to do. And I'll show you some samples. And I've already sloshed a bunch of water on the floor, so that's a great start. So here's some paste paper samples that, uh, that I've made. Where's the camera? There we go. Uh, a few different kinds. Lots of different ways you can do this. Oh, I'm not gonna show you every one of these, but lots of, I was in a brown mood that day. I was in a brown study. Brown, brown, brown. Here's bit of blue and purple left over. Let's see, let's get rid of the brown. How about some green? Granny Smith apples. And some um, pizza slices. Sorry, it does not all have to be um, representational. All right, so that's enough, uh, enough choices maybe for you. There's lots of different things you can do. Um, Put those aside for a minute. All right. Now, um, the first thing you wanna do is you need to make your paste. So if anybody knows how to make gravy, it's kind of the same process. Um, so yes, this is edible, at least it is until you put the paint in it. <clears throat> All right, so what you need here is you need a, can you see this okay? Can everybody see my, is, it, is the camera close enough? Um, Uh-oh, screenshot. I don't know how to do a screenshot. Sorry. Um, so you need a quarter cup flour, a cup of water. You whisk together the flour and about a third of the water. Make sure the water is cold. That is important if you don't want lumps in your gravy or your paste. Uh, you bring the rest of the water to a boil. Then you pour the flour mixture that you made back here into an enamel or a stainless steel pot. Uh, you don't want to use a Teflon pot because you'll scratch it up real quick. You're going to heat that uh, over low heat, whisking constantly. The idea here is no lumps. You do not want lumps. When the rest of the water comes to a boil, you're going to slowly add it to your uh, Pot of flour water. Yes, you do not want to use powdered sugar because I have done that before and I could not figure out why my paste was not thickening and it's because I was using powdered sugar. Thank you for reminding me of that. <clears throat> okay, so you stir, you slowly add the rest of the boiling water to the pot, whisking constantly. You want to do that for about seven minutes and it does get a little boring, uh, but you do want to stir it constantly for about seven minutes. Uh, then remove it from your heat, from the heat, and allow it to cool, and it will get thicker as it cools. So if you get tired of before the seven minutes, it'll, it'll also continue to thicken as it's cooling off. Okay, uh, and that will make you about a cup of paste. So I have made three cups of paste today, so I can have three choices of colors. Obviously, you can make as much as you want. Um, if you do end up with lumps after all if you know as hard as you try you still have lumps uh, you can either put it through a strainer of some kind i like to use a paste strainer a paint strainer which i don't have one but basically it's a big nylon bag and you can dump the paste into the bag over a bowl and then just squeeze it out 
try to show the motion here. You just squeeze it out of the bag like that. Um, so then all your lumps will be left in your little uh, nylon bag there. But um, so yeah, so don't worry too much about that. You can always get rid of lumps if you get them. All right, the materials you need for making paste paper. So hopefully you guys have been able to either take a screenshot or whatever of this recipe. If not, it's gone. Okay, you're gonna need some containers for your paint. I've made some red and some blue so far. I'm gonna make another one here in a minute. You need a container of water to wash off things as you go. You need some brushes. I like these little kitty brushes. They're really um, durable and they're a good size, little uh, Crayola kitty brushes. You need some clean sponges. I guess I can adjust this camera a little bit now. I don't need to be quite so close. Okay. Clean sponges. You need some rags uh, or whatever for your hands to keep your hands clean. Paper towels are also, you'll also need some paper towels. Um, what else? This is the fun part. You need some um, mark making tools. Um, so like these little uh, scrubby things you get from Bath and Body Works or whatever, these are great. Combs, uh, this little lids of things, these little roller, uh, foam roller tool things, old credit cards. You can um, cut uh, teeth into them and then you can custom, you know, like how far apart the teeth are. Tongue depressors, like anything. Anything can be a good uh, mark maker. Yeah, you see how much crap I have. I have um, glitter, which I would recommend not using because you, then you have glitter everywhere. Okay, mark making tools. What else? You also need a bin of clean water. Um, my bin is about 14 by 16. That water needs to stay clean. And I think that's everything. Um, paint. Oh, paper. The kind of paper you wanna use is like a drawing pa weight paper. Um, not, uh, you know, not like copy paper. That's too thin and too flimsy. So this is drawing paper. That's a nice uh, weight because we are gonna give it a little bit of um, stress working on it. All right, paper, paste, paint, water bins, sponges, mark making objects. You'll want a drying area. So I've got a place over here which you can't see, but it's I've just got an old shower curtain spread out um, for, so the pages can dry after I make them. Um, okay, I think that's it. All right, now I'm going to show you about mixing the paste. This is not complicated. So I've already got a red and a kind of a teal color. I think I'm gonna go for blue for this one. Just gonna squeeze a healthy dollop of paint in there. Okay, I'm having a hard time keeping up with the uh, chat. I thought, you know, I invited some friends to, to join me today and I'm starting to regret it a little bit because they're pretty snarky and they think they're funny and they're just not that funny. I, you know, I need to get some funnier friends, I think. <clears throat> okay, mix up the paste with the paint. All right, very complicated technique there. So now we got a good blue, and you can always add, you know, if you paint it and you see, oh, it's too thin, whatever, you can add more. Not a big deal. All right, so now I got my three colors. I am ready to go. I'm going to take first piece of paper. I'm going to Run it through my bin of water. So now I have a wet piece of paper. I'm sorry, I do love my friends. I have some great friends. Thank you for being here and supporting me, guys. That was a snarky thing to say. Okay, let's get my paper here where you can see it better. So you've laid it on the table. Whoa, there. Take your sponge and you want to just sort of wipe off all the excess water. Okay, that's good. Then you start to paint. So let's go ahead and start with this blue that I made, see how it came out. I'm just going to cover 
this paper with blue. Blue, 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 blue. I'm sorry I can't give you any uh, exact ratios of paste to paint. You just sort of have to experiment with that. Now, you want to be aware of your marks, um, your brush marks, your brush strokes. That does affect your design. So the way to think about doing this is um, you want to not think about it too much. You want to just sort of do this a little, a little bit zen if you can. Uh, just try to relax and have fun. Normally when I do this, I do it on a much bigger piece of paper um, so that I can just kind of get in a groove. You're just making patterns, shapes, repeating shapes. Um, you're, not, you're not drawing a picture, right? This is for decorative purposes. So start with the little comb here. Maybe I'll go in this direction too. All right, this is when my clean water comes in handy. And how about this little credit card guy? See what he does. Yeah, that's kind of fun. All right. So I want to, I want to do everything on one piece of paper, but. I would call that done. All right, I lost my sponge. Let's give it another go. So usually when I do this, I make, you know, probably 20 to 30 sheets at a time because you really just want to think sort of production. You don't want to worry about creating a masterpiece, right? Obviously that was not a masterpiece. So you're just, um, think production. All the extra water off. Okay. Dying to try this teal color because I got really excited when I made this. Um, okay, I need to uh, read this chat here. Um, so soothing. It is very soothing to watch and to do. It's it's um, it's amazing. It's very relaxing. Uh, how much working time do you have? You have a lot of working time. It's very slow to dry. So, um, yeah, that is something you don't have to worry about too much. Um, if it's not exactly perfect, then you need to find another hobby, Jamie, because we're not going for perfection here. In fact, look at those lumps that I left in. Can you see the lumps I left in? Maybe you can't see them. That's a good thing. So this color is kind of pale. I might go back and add a little more paint to it to... Uh, to darken it up a little bit. It looks paler on the camera than it does here. Sure it does, Robin. Okay, so see you can, like you can let your brush be part of your mark making process if you want. That's what I was trying to say earlier about, you know, you have to think about the brush strokes. They don't have to count, but they, they are gonna make an, uh, have, have an effect if you don't do it with mindfulness. All right. Now, if I, I've done that, if I don't like it, that's okay. I can just get rid of it. Paint right on top of it. Get rid of all that nonsense. I'll try it again. Okay. Happy accidents. Yes. Um, all right. Let's see what else have I got here. Oh, I love this little thing here. Watch this. This is fun. All right, so this little guy, you can just do little circles, but then you can move them and make little, like, tunnel-y shapes. Does that, hope that makes sense. Do, 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 do.
Okay, satisfying marks, yes. Cool tunnels, these are fun. Yeah, I love, this was a nice, neat, neat surprise. Okay, now, then let's see, maybe, hmm, let's do the comb again. I really like the comb. If you can see the difference that comb is making. Sometimes if you end up with a design that's too busy, you can kind of um, mute it a little bit by doing something like this. You know, like if your shapes turn out too big or some are too fussy, you know, you can um, mute it. Um, here's another way to mute it with this little scrunchy thing. Just do some like, like that. I might do some more of this on a different color because I think this color is too pale maybe to see. I'm just sort of bouncing it on there. I'm not really rough dragging it around. So I'm using my, my one bit of water to keep to clean my tools as I go. I've got a clean bit of water and a um, bit of dirty water. All right. Let's see, here's a little bit of sponge. See what this does. I don't like that. So I think I'm gonna go back with my comb again. Soften that a little bit. Oh, I'm glad the camera's picking it up good. It looks very light now to me here. All right, that's enough fussing with that piece. Let's try it again in a different color. I think that color is pretty pale. Clean up as you go. some red. It's very, very red. And you could certainly mix colors um, on your paper if you wanted to. Um, Let's see, I'm going to throw a little bit of blue on here and mix it with my tools. I don't want to get my paints mixed. Um, I don't want to get my paints mixed up. Let's see, which I use for that. How about this guy? Kind of fun. All right, now let's see what have we got here. How about these? Did I do this yet? If I did this yet. So you can also make like patterns, you know, do something like this, something like this. Whoops. I'm getting awfully fussy for having just told you not to get fussy. Mm 
<laughs> how do you learn how to do this? This is how you learn how to do it. You learn how to do it by doing this right here. Um, all right, here's a, here's a finer comb. I don't know what this is supposed to be, actually. Maybe this is some kind of scrap. I don't know what the heck it is. But let's... Um, this is how you learn how to do it, is by doing it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that one. All right. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, questions or any like uh, things you want to see? Things in particular you want to see? I have some more things I want to show you, but if you have questions about what you want me to do, I'd be glad to try something. You could get creative in what devices you use as mark. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many different kinds of things you can use. Um, uh, yeah, I haven't even started with my, I mean, I've got so many tools left still in this little bucket here. Get these out of the way. Clean as you go, clean as you go. Robin, do you know the weight of that drawing paper? I sure don't. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know it. I went into Michael's and bought a pad of drawing paper. All right, now I want to show you something um, a little different. Let's say you had a piece that you didn't really love. Okay, so here's a piece of paste paper I made, you know, re, um, before. It's dry. Um, let's say, okay, I, I'm, I'm not really crazy about this, so I'm going to re it. Okay, so this is a bigger sheet. I have to just see what you can see of it. Kind of get it in the camera view there. I'm not getting water on your equipment uh, in CSU. I don't think I am. <laughs> Trying my best. All right. Adjust this camera a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better, maybe. Okay. So you can just do it again. If you don't like it, you can do it again. So let's put add some blue to this one. There's a little air bubble. I didn't uh, say that that's kind of the purpose of that when you wipe it down you know you lay it down and then you wipe off the excess water you're sort of trying to get it to lay flat on your table that's what you want you don't want any air bubbles underneath so you can imagine this is kind of hard on the paper right so this is why you want uh, drawing paper you don't want anything too fine a bigger brush would also be good here Definitely use a painter's brush, something like that. By painter's brush, I mean, you know, like something like that. House painter brush is what I mean. Now what do we want? Let's see. Oh, all right, let's try this.
pizza slices. Okay, trial and error. Okay, I'm just trying to catch up with chat. Um, yeah, so I like this little tool a lot. I'm not going to do the whole page this way, but I'll just show you a little bit. Uh, this is just like a little, um, I think this is a dead paint brush. Like the paint, the paint end of it is gone. The, the brush end of it is just the... Now it's just a stick. That color makes it look like limes. Oh, you're right, it does. Okay, what else do we want? Put some pizzas on top, put some limes on top of those instead of under. So now you get the sort of earlier green color showing through. All right, and what else? I'm using a little bottle top. That's kind of fun. Okay, I like this a lot better than the original. Okay. Not sure limes grow on a vine. What's a corona when you need it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's five o'clock somewhere. Alrighty. All right. Now, clean up. I need some kind of shop person here to clean up for me. This is way too time consuming. I really have to clean up after myself. I don't think so. All right. Now this one I'm going to show you. Another way you can reuse old paste paper if you if you like it or if you don't like it, it doesn't matter. So first, I think I'll put down. Some red. All right. Now remember, this is paste, right? So I'm going to now 
take an old piece of paste paper that I don't particularly love. This is a glitter experiment. And I'm just going to tear it into strips. And I'm just going to slap that right down there, like so. Oh, every time I, okay, red, right, got it, right, red, I'm with you, okay. A little slow on the uptake here. Okay. Sound effects and all. Okay. Now I could go back over it again with red. I might just try to clean off my brush and go over it a little bit with red. Don't want too much red on this purple. That's already too much red. Okay, and now let's see. Where's my trusty comb? My trusty comb. Let's see if I can really. Are you able to see that design okay? It's not very. Let me get the camera a little bit closer. Maybe I'll do a little blue in here too. You do have to be a little bit like, I don't know, kind of fearless, which I'm not always in this kind of case, but you know, you have to be willing to, um, you know, be willing to try, you know, risk messing up, right? I think that turned out okay, actually. I think I'll kind of like that. You could ignore the, when I cut it off, it'll be, cut off the edges, it'll be good. Okay. All right, it's only 12.40. What else can I show you? I'm trying to do a little more color mixing. I'm being a little bit, um, I'm being a little bit careful just because I don't want to mix my colors together. Yeah, I don't want to mix my, um, I don't want to contaminate my jars of color. So I'm being a little bit more cautious than you need to be really. Um, you could certainly go crazy.
with um, your colors if you don't care about mixing them up. Sometimes I just love the, I just love the, what the brush does, you know, it's really makes some neat, neat patterns or something, I don't know. All right. Let's see. Let's try this guy. I think he's falling apart. I'm going to do that. All right. What else have I got here? Trains are coming. I like the teal. Can you add a, do another one in that color? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, did you hear the train? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At least you're not hearing the leaf blower who was going here about an hour ago. Yeah, I love those two colors together, just like they are. And here we see the water molecules as they... I don't know where I'm going with that. So I'm sure some of you could come up with some more... Uh, I'm kind of wedded to my five or six marks that I make. <laughs> I don't have a lot of, uh, what do you call it? This is what, you know, it's fun to do this with a group of people because then you can look at what somebody else is doing and go, oh, I want to make that mark, you know. A little. So I like that you can go back, you know, it's a layered thing, right? You definitely end up with layers and layers. A palimpsest, isn't that the word? When you have layers of things like that, when you can see a little bit of the previous thing underneath it. That's kind of cool, actually. I really like that one a lot. That's pretty good. Bubbly, this one, yes. This one, yes, yes, yes. What's your go-to tool, Robin? Which makes your favorite pattern? Oh gosh, well, obviously I like the comb. I definitely love doing the comb and making pattern. I like the, um, I like the uh, homemade comb, like this one with the, um, made from a credit card or some kind of card where you can make the your own, um, you can determine the width and thickness of your uh, lines. Um, and I like this thing too. I really like this guy a lot. It, it's nice when you, you like your pattern, but it's too much. You know, if you think about, okay, I'm gonna use this pattern 
um, to line to be in sheets for a book, right? And so you have to think about the scale of the book and the um, you know the size of the book and the size of the pattern. You know you don't want a pattern that's so the elements of which are so huge they kind of overwhelm the size of the paper, if that makes sense. Um, so if you had sometimes if you have a, pa a pattern that's too big or too busy, um, you can take this and just sort of mute it a little bit and then if you, you know, you still get the effect of the nice pattern that you have, but it kind of makes it less uh, um, over the top. I can't really say what I'm trying to say here. Um, I might try one intentionally that way. Oh no, I'm running out of room. Okay, what's your, okay. All right. I'm sort of, I'll try one like I just described. Um, but I think I'm pretty much done with what I wanted to teach you. I, want, I did want to say a little bit about cleanup. Um, how about the best way to do that? But I won't, I won't do that quite yet. I'll do one more. Um, and then uh, if you guys have any questions or else I will talk to you a little bit about cleanup method. All right. Drying time. Yes, drying time. Um, I usually dry them outside. I mean, obviously I'm not today because I'm trying to do it all right here nearby. Um, and on a hot day, not too humid, they can dry pretty quick. Um, but inside here today, yeah, I probably, I'd probably give these at least till tomorrow to really be dry all the way. But outside, you know, maybe an hour. If it's a if it's not a very humid day, okay. I haven't done much with red. Let's do a little more red. Looks like I only got one red one. Okay. Now, uh, one thing, if you're going to use these to cover books with or boxes, or if you're going to use them to, you know, line your, if you're going to use them on the outside of a book, like I showed you at the beginning, um, I would think that it might be a good idea to have some sort of sealant. Um, and like, um, So I like this Liquitex um, gloss medium and varnish, and then I have a, uh, a matte version. So you can um, put some on this after it's dry. If you're gonna use it on the outside of something where you need it to have a little bit of a hard shell or a little bit of a protection, you know, you don't want it to rub off on people's hands or, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, fast like it's not going to easily rub off on anything but like if you really if it's going to be on the outside of something and you really want it to not rub off then it'd be a good idea to seal it with something um okay if i want to use this on an end sheet and need to adhere it to a board will moisture reactivate the paste and mess up the design no i don't think it will if you remember um in the one that i double dipped um, you probably couldn't tell on this camera, but um, the original pattern stayed pretty pretty good, even though I'm painting right on top of it and uh, scraping, making marks right on top of it. So it's pretty it's pretty much there once it's there. But um, uh, on the outside, though, I would seal it. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure if I really am if I'm answering a different question or if I'm answering the one you asked. <laughs> All right. So let me do. Let me do one of my favorite little patterns here. I think I did this before. Well, let's see. Let's, let's change it up a little bit. I don't know if you're noticing, too, how I try to go off the page. You know, I try to keep going until I'm out off the, off the, don't stop on the edge of the paper, but go ahead and go off the page. Um, 
it just helps you to have a cleaner pattern and helps you to not you don't want to make a vignette right you're not trying to make a little painting you're trying to make a sheet of something that you can work with later so you don't want it to have a an edge if that makes i don't know if that makes sense or not okay let's check on this way too You know, I hear those, those crows outside laughing at me. Okay, so I like this pattern, but let's say, <clears throat> um, let's say my book is pretty small. Okay, so if this were for a big book, I mean, it might be okay. It's kind of wild, but it might be okay for a bigger book. But if my book is small and this is an end sheet, you know, holy crap, that's like, you know, I've got pieces of fettuccine on the bench. That's too huge. So you can take this, um, and just do some of this stuff here and just kind of mute it a little bit. Okay. Can you see how that just kind of, it's the same pattern, but it's just, it's not quite so screaming at you. I'm still going to do this with a little, uh, little more painting. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so that kind of mutes it as well. All right, I think that's enough. Let's stop there, and I'm out of drying, drying space, so I've got to stop. <clears throat> All right, so when you're cleaning up, let me just say a couple things about cleaning up. Um, try to wash your brushes in your dirty water first. Get as much of the paint off in the dirty water as you can. So here's my dirty water that I've been using. I'm trying to fix the camera back a little bit here. There we go. Here's my dirty water. Uh, try to get as much of the paint off as you can in that before you wash them in the sink with the running water. I like to try to get most of that paint off. Oh, and water just sprayed everywhere. Okay, please don't ruin the library's equipment, Robin. And then, and um, for these brushes that have gobs of paint on them, I don't want, I just don't want a lot of water, a lot of paint to go down the drain at some point. So like these brushes that are really loaded up with paint, I like to just try to get most of that off before I wash them with paper towels. Because this is acrylic, you don't really, this is not really great for the uh, water system to have acrylic paint in it. And then when you've you've got as much paint as you can off and you clean as much clean things as much as you can this water before washing with soap and water. Okay, then I like to pour pour this out. Pour this out over a strain of like a several paper towels or a couple of rags or something like that. Just pour this water through those rags down your drain so that will absorb some more of the paint. So you're still going to you're still going to put some paint down the drain but you're putting a lot less and then finally you, after all that then you can wash finish washing your brushes in soapy water okay i think that's it um i can't think of anything else i need to say and it's almost one o'clock so that's not too bad um 
Oh, does the water look blue? It looks totally purple to me from here. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think I'm done. And if you guys have any last minute questions, uh, we can hang here for a minute. But otherwise, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You're very welcome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there. And I'll see you guys later.